When a web page gets loaded in the browser, the DOM or document object model is created. This document object model is a tree-like structure, which represents the structure or hierarchy of elements on our page. Now, often what we want to do is navigate or traverse that structure with JavaScript in order to manipulate those page elements in various ways. Now, just like in a family tree, where we have a hierarchy of grandparent to parent to child or siblings, we have the same type of structure in a DOM tree. Let me give you an example. Here in my HTML, you can see that within these body tags, I have a div with an ID of grandparent, and then within that grandparent div, I have another div with an ID of parent. And finally, within that parent div, I have a div with the ID of child. So we can say that these elements exist in a hierarchy of grandparent to parent to child elements. In order to traverse and ultimately manipulate the DOM, the first step that we need to take is to actually get a reference to a DOM element. And for this, we have several different methods that we can use. Some of these are get element by ID, get elements by class name, and others. But here we'll use query selector to get a reference to the parentive. So let's create a constant and we'll call it parentive. And we'll say document.querySelector and we'll pass in that div with the ID of parent. And now that we have a reference into the DOM, we can start traversing the DOM. So there are three different directions that we can go when we traverse. We can go up the DOM tree, we can go down the DOM tree, or we can traverse side by side to visit a neighboring sibling element. Let's start out by traversing up the DOM tree. So I'm going to take that parent div and I'm going to use a property on it called parent element. And then we'll say console.dir so we can actually see this in the browser console. And you can see that we're getting that grandparent div element, which is the parent of the parent div. Now let's try traversing down the DOM tree. So in this case, I'll take the parent div element again, and I'll say parent div dot children. And what children's going to do is it's going to give us an HTML collection containing those child elements of the parent div. And in this case, we can see that we're currently getting one element, which is the div with the ID of child. But let me go ahead and duplicate that child div so that now we have two of them. And now if I save and look in the console, we can see that we're getting two child elements. Now just like usually with a JavaScript array, we can access the various elements by using square brackets. And so if I wanted to get that first child div, I can access it with the number zero. And if I wanted to get the second child div, I can access it with the number one. And then let's try visiting a sibling element. So since I already duplicated that div with the ID of child, we now have these two sibling elements. Right, you can see that they exist on the same level. So let's say that I wanted to get access to that first child div. Well, right now, as you can see, we're on parent div.children1, which is actually the second child div. So in order to get the first one, we can use a property called previous element sibling. And that'll give us the first child div. If we were already on the first child div and we wanted to get the next one, we could use next element sibling. So we've seen DOM traversal up, down, and side to side, but there's a bit more to the picture. And to understand what I'm about to show you, I want to first make sure that you understand the difference between a DOM node and a DOM element. So this is actually really interesting. You see, all HTML elements can be considered nodes, but not all nodes are HTML elements. Let me come here under this grandparent div, for example, and create a comment. Well, now I've created a node, and this one specific kind of node is called a comment node. If I were to go ahead and add some text content to this child div, well, now I've created another type of node. This one is called a text node. And believe it or not, even things like white space, line breaks, and carriage returns are also classified as text nodes. Now our divs, these are nodes as well, and specifically, these are called element nodes. For your reference, here are the various node types listed on MDN, and you can see those element, text, and comment nodes that we talked about. 
Now that you understand the difference between HTML elements and nodes, you might be wondering why I even bothered explaining this. Well, you see, with DOM traversal, we can traverse not only by HTML elements, but also by nodes. In this chart, you can see side by side the element properties, which are the ones that we've already looked at, and their corresponding node properties. So instead of using parent element, if we wanted to get the parent node, we can use parent node. Instead of children, we can use child nodes. And instead of next element sibling and previous element sibling, we can simply use next sibling and previous sibling. So let's try an example now in code where we actually access some nodes rather than HTML elements. Let's comment out this line three, and what we'll do is we'll console.dir, and we'll get that parent div, and instead of saying parentdiv.children, we'll say parentdiv.childnodes. So let's save and see what we get. And look here in the console, you can see we're getting a node list now with five elements. So let's see what those five elements are. And check it out, not only are we getting these two child divs within that parent div, but we're also getting three text nodes. And what are these three text nodes? Well, those are the line breaks that are occurring after each one of these elements. So I'd say most often you're going to be using the element properties rather than the node properties. For example, probably one of the most common things to do is to style elements. So let's comment at line 4 and we'll bring back line 3. Let's get rid of this console.dir. And now that we have access to this second child element of that parent div, let's say that we wanted to style it. So we can do something like style dot background color and let's say we'll set it to a background color of orange. And now if we save, check out the browser, and you can see that this second child div here is the one that got the background color of orange. One thing that you might have been asking yourself all along is, well, why not just use document.querySelector to get any element? Well, the thing is, if we already have access to an element, Using these DOM traversal properties is more efficient than querying the entire document for a particular element. However, another way to do something similar is we could, for example, take the parent div and we can use query selector on that. And let's say that we want to query for that first child div. So let's pass in that div with the ID of child and let's console.dir that and let's save. And you can see in the console that we're getting this first child div. And just to make sure it's actually the first one, let's add another class to this. Let's say first child. And here you can see that, yeah, we're getting that first child div. By the way, if you want to explore the DOM further, I have a course for you on DOM events in JavaScript. And this course is packed with everything that you need to know about the inner workings of DOM events, how to listen to events, and how to handle them with JavaScript. And we definitely go into a lot of detail on everything from mouse events to keyboard events to focus and blur events, and much, much more. You'll find the link below in the description and the comment sections. I'd love for you to check it out. See you next time.